Guys, it's been a long time since I've been in a classroom at Penn State University, but it's kind of interesting to be back here, and I think this is Sarah's office right here. Sarah? Oh, hey. How you doing? Hi, Mike. Come on in. Have a seat. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet I'd you, I'd shake too. your hand, but I want to make sure we're practicing. Yeah, six feet of distance. Social right distance. <laughs> yep. So Sarah, I really appreciate you reaching out to me. When I saw your email, I thought it was super interesting. And because I went to Penn State, I definitely wanted to follow up. But you're a doctorate student here at the university, and you are working on a couple projects that ultimately are going to lead to conserving the species here in the state of Pennsylvania. Can you talk a little bit about exactly what you're doing and maybe we can even look at a couple of the projects you're working on? Sure. So we know that brook trout are such a widely celebrated species across the state. Lots of people love to fish for them. Uh, but I think we assume we know everything that there is to know about brook trout and I wanted to challenge that. You know, what don't we know uh, and how can that aid us in conservation? So I'm exploring what do brook trout look like across the state as well as their genetics and what that can tell us to help us uh, prioritize conservation efforts. Hmm. So when you say what the brook trout looks like, are you talking about looking and exploring variations in the fish depending on where they're caught? And if so, what, what are some of the things that you're looking at to try to identify that? Exactly. Brook trout have such a wide range. They're found um, all the way up into Canada along the east coast, all the way into northern Georgia. Um, and so that's a pretty big area um, for brook trout to all be the same. And so we uh, started looking at brook trout and wanted to look at new ways to look at them. And one of the ways we decided to do that was to look at the skull. Let me show you some of those. So we've been using medical CT scans to look at the skulls of brook trout. Uh, so what we have here is one of those skulls. And we noticed that this brook trout has a really big eye, uh, that it has a rounded snout. Uh, we can look at it from different angles. So from underneath, you see all of those teeth on its upper jaw. We can look at this angle here. Uh, but this is just one of many CT scans that we've done. Here's another. This one has a much pointier face. Its eye is a little bit lower on its head. And from underneath, it's a lot narrower and a little bit pointier. So we're using computer automation to compare all of these skulls against one another and capture that shape variation. So, Sarah, what does the variation between one brook trout skull and another tell you? If, if a jaw is more kipe or the eye sockets are larger on certain fish, what type of inferences are you drawing about that? Uh, right now, my working hypothesis is that it has something to do with how they're feeding in the water column. So if they have eyes that are higher up on their head, they might be uh, feeding off of the drift uh, on top of the water a little bit more, whereas those with a mouth right at the end of their snout might be feeding um, out of the drift in a run. Uh, and those with mouths on the bottom uh, could be feeding off macrovertebrates a little bit more on the bottom of the stream. Do you believe that there are any environmental uh, traits or features that might be impacting those variations of the skulls? So there is something called phenotypic plasticity, uh, which has to do with changing, um, not immediately, but over time to the environment available to you. Uh, so it could have something to do with the different habitat types within a certain stream. So a lot of the work that we do has to deal with preserved fish uh, from our museum. But one of the things that doesn't preserve well is color and the patterns start to fade over time. Let me show you an example of that. You know, from these brook trout here, we no longer see any of the red, any of the orange. We can see that there's a little bit of a halo around the spots, but it's not really what we're used to seeing in the stream. So that's where pictures come into play. And that's where we need the help of uh, fishermen and fisherwomen across the state of Pennsylvania. We need pictures submitted like this one here on the screen. This allows us to quantify the colors that we see, right? We see these beautiful red dots and these blue halos. Uh, we see these beautiful orange fins. We can start to count the par marks, look at the vermiculation or the worm-like patterns on the back. Uh, and having this card in the picture, we can get the size of the fish. We know the size of the blocks. And so we can start to look at the age of the fish that are collected and fished across Pennsylvania. Um, 
in addition to getting to admire the beauty um, and just the color variation across the state. So guys, what Sarah is saying is she really needs your help. She needs the fishing community here on the East Coast, specifically in Pennsylvania, people that love to fish for brook trout. She needs your help to collect data on these fish so that we can do our part to help to conserve their wild populations. And her and her team have put together a really easy process that involves visiting a web page, providing some information, and they will actually send you a card or cards that you can use to take pictures of these wild brook trout. And I believe even wild brown trout, I think wild brown trout are also going to be included in the future. Um, but I'm going to let Sarah tell you about that. But please, guys, if you care about wild brook trout here in the east, please go out, follow this process that she's going to explain because there's no better thing that we can be involved with to help conserve these fish. So Sarah, can you real quick just run over the process that folks can follow so that we can all help you out? Sure. All they need to do is click on the link in the description to fill out the Google form that just tells me how many cards they want and where I should mail them to. Then in the mail, they'll receive the gray cards, which need to be included in the pictures. This allows us to control the white balance and measure the fish in the pictures. We'll also include the instructions on how to download the app, download our survey, and then the only other thing you have to do is go fishing. In fact, Mike, why don't we go do that now? Are you guys show me how to do all this? so I'll we can show you the whole thing. Show all my subscribers? Okay, let's go do it. I haven't been brook trout fishing for so long. So no, it's been a while. What's going on? How's it going? What's, up, man? What's your name? My name's Eamon, and um, I'm helping Sarah out with our uh, citizen angler project we have going on. Oh, cool. And Nate and I are hoping to catch a fish here today and show you guys what it's all about and how to document the metric. That's awesome. I'm, I'm just happy to see water in this stream after the summer we had in Pennsylvania. It was yeah, terrible. Definitely. This is much needed. Much needed. <laughs> For sure. And you said your name's Nate? So, yeah, my name's Nate Wyant. I work at Penn State as a fisheries technician, and I'm just out here to help. Damon and Sarah with their project that they have going on. Awesome. Well, looking forward to seeing what we can do here. What's up next, Sarah? So let's see if they can get a fish on the fly rod. If not, we'll show you how we sample brook trout as fisheries researchers, and then we'll document it on the app. Okay, cool. Well, let's do it. Sounds good. Nice work, Eamon. Thanks. Yeah, look at that little guy. Very cool. So if you have decided to participate in this project, I'm going to show you what you're going to want to do once you've received your um, color correction card right here and you've caught your, you've caught your brook trout. So first, you're going to want to grab your brook trout. Presumably, you'll have a net. Oops. Easier said than done. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Should they be doing this in a net, or is it okay to do it in your hand? Um, I would think you would want the fish to be in the net for as long as possible, just just so they can get um, as much water as they need, and then just briefly, brief, very briefly, pull it out and keep it in your hand. Take the picture, and you also really want to make sure your hand has already been wet, so that it doesn't remove any of the um, protective coating they have on them. Yep. So now what you're going to want to do is once you have your fish in your card. As you can see, the instructions say, place this side up with the fish oriented as above so that all three squares are visible. So with a tiny fish like that, you can pretty much just orient it like that on one hand, go in, take your picture, and then that's what your picture should, oops, that's what your picture should look like. And then once you've taken your picture and everything is visible, um, you're going to want to release your fish back into the creek.
and he's off. So one of the things we just want to remind everybody about is that the, the health of the fish is really at the forefront of this. So if the fish appears stressed, just release it right away. It's not worth um, holding the fish any longer than necessary just to get a picture for us. Uh, so remember to use a net when that works best for you to keep the fish wet, to keep your hand wet. Um, check out the tips that we sent you in the instructional uh, handout just as some good practices to take pictures while you're out fishing. You can also check out the website keepfishwet.org um, for additional photography and safe fish handling practices. All right, everybody. So once you have the picture of your brook trout with the color correction card, what you're going to want to do is download the survey app and the specific survey that Sarah has mentioned previously. Uh, once you've done this, you're going to want to submit a picture of the brook trout as well as fill out a number of fields. Uh, one of the fields included in the survey is a question about where you caught this trout. I just want to clarify that any information regarding the location of where these fish have been caught will never be released to the public. Um, the only place where this information will stay is within the data. Um, and any questions you may have about how to get any of this done or about the color correction cards, all of that can be found uh, in a link in the description of the video. And finally, I'd just like to say, um, both Sarah and myself and everybody else uh, helping out with this project would really like to encourage everybody to get out there, get some fish, um, submit some pictures, and really help out with this as this sort of information, this sort of research, research is very important in helping conserve uh, native brook trout in Pennsylvania. Thank you.